Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Kalson Ahmed Abdi. Today is Monday, April the 27th. Welcome to Shah with the EU. Shah with the EU is a new podcast series from the European Union delegation to Somalia, where we interview EU staff, implementing partners of EU-funded projects, development uh, partners of EU-funded projects, ex uh, development experts, stakeholders such as civil society groups, and ordinary Somali citizens telling their stories of how EU projects have impacted their lives. Today, we have Mustafa Othman uh, from Shakadon. Welcome, Mustafa. Could you please tell us a little bit about yourself and also about uh, Shakadon? Okay, thank you. So, um, so yeah, so my name is Mustafa and uh, I've been working with Shakadon since the beginning. I'm one of the co-founders. Uh, the organization was founded in 2011, um, and we focus on four main areas. Um, that's youth employment, youth entrepreneurship, um, uh, private sector development, and then also technology for development. Um, so we work across uh, Somalia and Somaliland. Okay. Thank you very much and welcome. Thank you for talking to us. So I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. So as you know, we are going through uh, global crisis of COVID-19 and we want to understand you know what's the situation in Somaliland and how you're coping with the situation. I know that Shakadon from online activities that you are also a major stakeholder in supporting the system there. Yeah so generally in uh, Somaliland I think it shares the same uh, it's in the same situation as most of the world when it comes to um, uh, schools being shut down uh, not just schools, but also any training centers. Um, you know, government advising to stay at home, um, and mainly the the economy uh, in in standstill. Um, so right now, um, the entire country really is in uh, uh, is interrupted uh, with this uh, COVID nineteen. Um, a lot of young people that we have been supporting uh, in trying helping them get jobs, helping them establish businesses. A lot of them are now telling us that they're no longer in, in jobs and some of the businesses that we helped establish has also collapsed. Um, if, if you come, just come back to our office alone, we, we had to um, uh, advise our staff to also not to come to the office uh, and also hold any trainings that should be happening uh, in the country. So it's actually quite, um, uh, it's, it's, it's disrupting. Mm -hmm. um, and so this actually, they, you know, we share the same situation as with other countries in the world. Okay, but um, I think it's important to also share with the audience that, uh, in fact, um, it's some somehow worse because we were already in a very precarious situation. You know, a new country, new um, systems in place. You know, still very fragile, still going through crises like you know drought and. You know, right now we also have the locust infestation across East uh, and Horn of Africa. So we are already in a very precarious situation. So this just makes things just that much more yeah. worse and tips us into more of a crisis than it would in other parts of the Absolutely. world. Absolutely. I mean, I, I agree. I agree with you on that statement. Um, we are different to the world in that sense, uh, in, in the sense that, uh, you know, the Somali uh, peninsula as a whole, it's really, it's already the young people are, are suffering in many ways because there's such a high unemployment rate, almost 70, 70% over unemployed generally. And this also now adds to that uh, already uh, sort of um, a challenge that the country is, is, is facing. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so I understand that Shakadon and uh, several other partners came together um, about, I think two weeks ago, to establish the call center. So this is the COVID-19 helpline. Could you please tell us a little bit about that and how you got to starting that up? Yeah, so yeah. So um, one of the things we want to do is, is to, to provide us, you know, to, to make ourselves available to the government uh, and to see what we can do as an organization to support the government. We were able to develop a COVID-19 helpline for the Ministry of Health uh, and the committee that are handling this. Um, and this came about primarily with, with the Shakadon's uh, staff really going out there, out of their way, 
to see what support they could provide to, to the government to assist uh, in, 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 in dealing with this COVID-19 if the outbreak was to get worse. So we developed a system. Um, it's an IVR-based system, which is interactive voice response a system that's based on mobile phone. So beneficiaries will be able to call um, uh, call a number, three-digit short code, 988, and access four main services. Uh, one is to provide, you know, get the up-to-date information, WHO-based information and uh, Ministry of Health information on COVID-19 and how they can take preventive actions. Uh, another option is uh, for them to self-diagnose or self-screen, as we should say, uh, to just we put a few options there for them to self-screen for the, for the COVID-19 and to see whether they have these symptoms. And if they have, they would be uh, directed, diverted to speak to, to a doctor who sits in the call center. Um, another option is, uh, is somebody who you know, doesn't want to speak to somebody uh, and to confidentially leave a voice message. And another option is also to speak to a call center agents. So, um, so this is a system we've developed. And um, now, once we developed the system, we presented it to the ministry. And um, we also had the support of Oxfam, uh, Oxfam Novib, who, once we also told them about this idea, uh, really were forthcoming and really supported the idea. Uh, we also then um, spoke to Telesom, which is the largest telecommunication company in, 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 Somal in, in Somaliland, uh, to come on board. They were already actually supporting the ministry with uh, you know, providing a short code. Um, uh, a short code and also providing free minutes. So anyone who's calling would call for free of charge. Um, but unfortunately, there was a lot of limitations with that um, uh, short code and also because it was only linked to uh, one number, uh, which is sitting at the Ministry of Health and, and at the time was manned by administrative staff who didn't know how to deal with these calls. So uh, it was actually quite... Um, uh, a, a national collaboration between you know NGOs, international NGOs, local organizations, and also the private sector, who all wanted to support the Ministry of Health in dealing with this uh, COVID-19. Okay. Um, yeah, and ever since, uh, I mean, just to give you also maybe an idea of also the capacity of the call center. Currently, there's about 16 uh, call center agents. There's two doctors uh, that are there, and one per shift. And um, currently there is uh, two different shifts there, uh, one in the morning and then also one in the afternoon uh, until up to 10, 10 p.m. Unfortunately, the government doesn't have uh, the capacity or we don't have the capacity yet to provide 24 hour service. Okay. Although that is actually something that's in the pipeline and requested by, by the ministry. Okay. Um, currently we are receiving quite high number of calls. And um, uh, I think a single day we received over 40,000 calls. 40,000 calls. 40,000 uh, during the launching, almost 40,000. At the moment, in the last uh, two weeks, we received over 380,000 calls, uh, accessing the different uh, services that the, the service provides. Okay. Uh, option one, option two, and option three, which is the self information, self screening, uh, speaking to a doctor uh, or a call agent. Okay, can I just ask about the system that you've created? How long did it take you for you to develop that system or did you already have something just waiting uh, and ready to roll out if there were ever an, an emergency? Yeah, so the good thing with Shakaton is that we already have an infrastructure, uh, meaning that we've already been providing um, these kind of services for the last you know, 10 years to international organizations, and even some to the EU, EU some are actually EU-funded projects under the Restore and also under the uh, uh, SOMREP uh, projects. Okay. So what we've done is we've tailored, uh, we, we're using those infrastructures that are already there and then developed a new application, a new interface for the Ministry of Health. Okay, excellent. So in, uh, in terms of, in terms of time-wise, in terms of time-wise, it was quick for us to, to establish um, uh, the system because of the you know the extension infrastructure was there, the staff was already there, okay. uh, and willing to of course make these uh, changes and and, uh, and modifications. Yeah. So it took us about two weeks from beginning from from start to the end to have the okay. full deployment. And I think I also wanted to mention that as ever since the launching, also the second largest telecommunication company there, which is Somtel, have also um, opted to come on board 
and support the Ministry of Health. So we've also managed to integrate uh, the COVID-19 helpline with Somtel, uh, which is again the second largest telecom. Oh, wow. So it's great that, you know, it's a Somali solution for a Somali problem. So, you know, providing services in Somali to the Somali population. So I have a question in regards to the calls that you're receiving. So are you keeping information? Are you keeping a database of the calls that you're receiving? You know, the demographic, the cases, where are the cases coming from? You know, what are active cases or considered active cases? Um, you know, how are we managing the information that you're receiving? Yeah, okay, just I uh, want to add one more point uh, to that, then I'll come to that. So after we launched also the Portland government, Ministry of Health also requested the service from us. Okay. And uh, we, were now, we are now actually now in the process of setting it up. Uh, so it's not fully done yet, but the, the, you know, the, the, the call center agents have been, uh, been uh, you know, recruited. Oxford will come on board and are now supporting that. Okay. Um, and now we, we, we're developing a new, totally new system for, for the Ministry of Health in Putland. Okay. And now the way the calls have been managed is that every day, one, once the calls come in, um, they go through a series of processes. Uh, once they come in, uh, they are logged into the system. And uh, once it's logged into the system, um, these call center agents who are all actually, by the way, trained, and uh, they're trained by Shakadon on the technology side, Telesom on the call center aspect, and then uh, Ministry of Health on the WHO guidelines. Um, so these health workers who are the call center agents are now receiving these calls. Mm -hmm. Once they receive the calls, they log into the system and then now they rate the, they rate the, 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 uh, the call, the, the, the urgency of the call. So they put high, medium or low. So based on the, what the, uh, um, the caller is telling the call agents, they now base that on what, to, what rating to give. So if it's high, then the doctor will be doing some verifications, all the high uh, status uh, callers. Mm -hmm. Once he does the verification by calling back and asking further questions, these are now again determined whether it's actually still high. And if it's high, these are then uh, every morning, uh, sorry, every evening, we submit uh, a compiled list uh, of, um, of cases, potential cases, to the Ministry of Health to further investigate and take action. Mm -hmm. Now, once it reaches the Ministry of Health, um, so there's a, our main contact is the, is the emergency uh, officer at the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. who then um, forwards it to the regions. Okay. Once you force it to the regions, the regions are there now to take action by doing uh, by calling the person, going to their go, going to their house, checking whether or not this person is actually uh, basically says what they you know has what they say they have, okay. and does more verifications. Okay. So if they are deemed to be someone who needs to be going into a quarantine. They'll be advised to go to quarantine. If uh, someone is in a very serious situation and needs to get some tests done, then the tests are, are done by the minister. First, I should say congratulations for developing a system that's uh, also replicable in other states within Somalia. So congratulations for that. And, you know, thank you for actually helping the community at such a difficult time. So what lessons have you learned, like in building the first, um, uh, first system? And, um, you know, what have you learned? Yeah, so we learned it's not perfect. It's not a perfect system, and that can be done in two weeks. Some of the things we've learned is, number one, a lot of the callers are, are because also getting a lot of spam, spam callers. Okay. So these two things have, have somehow, um, you, know, you know, increased the number of calls that we're getting per day. So what we've done uh, from what we've done, that stops people from uh, calling more than twice in a day uh, and basically blocks them for seven days if they continue to call. Uh, so, so that we can give fair access to everybody, especially people who may need the support of the Ministry of Health. Okay. Um, so that's what we've done on that aspect. On the other aspect, what we've done is um, we've also uh, minimized the number of uh, um, uh, repeat callers. So in our reports, we're also sort of removing any repeat callers from our, in, on, our, on our reports. Okay. Uh, we temporarily kind of halted the, for example, the, the messaging side of the system. Um, and unfortunately that was not a good idea <laughs> because we had, all of a sudden we had like 2000 messages that the staff couldn't cope with. So they didn't have the capacity to answer calls while at the same time trying to process 
voice messages that were left by the callers. Okay. So we temporarily halted that service. Again, now once they went through the entire, entire list, we now reactivated that, that service again. Okay. So we, every day we're learning and adjusting the system as we learn. Yes. But other things that are outside of the system is that um, uh, generally in the, the process between uh, the ministry uh, and to the regions, it's also something that can be improved quite uh, highly. And this is something that we're now working with the Ministry of Health and also Oxfam supporting in this, uh, in seeing how we can better enhance uh, that communication between the, 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 the committees that are based in the different uh, regions and also the main call center, making sure that all you know um, works together seamlessly. Okay. And other things we're also learning is that um, uh, during the you know a lot of people are concerned uh, generally, mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of misconception about this disease, um, especially after one of the one of uh, sheikhs as well known I think based in Puntland mentioned that this disease only affects people who are not are non Muslims. And this was actually a major sort of turning point for, for, for communications that were you know, being put out and efforts that were being put out by the NGOs and also the government uh, in Somaliland as well as in Punda and Satsang Somalia. And um, it has kind of hindered these efforts because now a lot of people think, oh, this doesn't affect us. So a lot more needs to be done in the communication aspect. That's also one thing we're learning from the kind of calls we're getting, the kind of different questions that have been raised by the different callers. And also, um, uh, we are, we're seeing a lot more concerned people um, of this disease. I, I have to agree with you. I think we need to do more in terms of communications and sensitizing people to what the disease is uh, and also building trust with them. Because um, I'm also noticing here in Mogadishu and also with uh, Ramadan coming in is that people are still kind of meeting. Um, the curfew that we have currently is from dusk to dawn. Um, which is, uh, I think, not enough to curb the disease because we all are still meeting in the daytime. People are still going to the mosque. So that's um, still a, a little bit worrisome. Um, and I think communications and building trust and also just helping the people understand what this disease really is and how it's passed on. Uh, and also just working with, again, these, um, you know, leaders in the community like the chefs and uh, and community leaders on just how they can pass on that message effectively so that they're not misinforming the community. So I know that you guys, um, Shakadon, had an event, um, I think about a week ago uh, in Hargeisa, and this was to talk about the effect of COVID-19 on small and medium-sized businesses. Do you care to share maybe any, um, any of the findings that came from that conversation perhaps? Yeah, so as part of our, so we have this, uh, uh, you know, Harhab, Harhab, Shagadon founded Harhab, so we handed over some of our activities to Harhab. So one of the things that Harhab has been running uh, recently uh, is a startup huddle. Um, so these startup huddle are business uh, talk shows that happens at the hub on a, on a monthly basis. And really is there to learn, uh, for young people to learn from other young people who are in business. Uh, so this special uh, event that was put together by the hub manager uh, last uh, last week uh, really focused on the challenges that the uh, COVID-19 has brought on the, uh, the SMEs, uh, the small medium enterprises, and also uh, youth-run businesses. Um, and I think one of the major things that have uh, have come out from that conversation was that a lot of businesses have closed down uh, ever since the COVID-19. And as a result of this, a lot of people have been laid, uh, laid off. Mm -hmm. And um, laying off, meaning that they are home, um, you know, uh, event spaces, uh, you know, where they play football have also been closed down. And people are confined to, 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 to you know, to the neighborhoods and their, their homes. Um, so this, we also, some of the other outcomes that came out of Romain is that, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the, the most poor, the most vulnerable, uh, people in the community are, are further affected by this disease and mm -hmm. um, especially people who are the day workers that are going out to you know to do uh, you know fetch for for their family for that day whether to you know to do uh, masonry work or constructions and um, that kind of people are, are mainly affected and um, and are really have been pushed to the you know to, 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 to the brinks of poverty so this and also one of the things that we've also learned 
uh, in that conversation is that a lot of uh, young, you know, uh, youth run businesses are also closing down, uh, slowly closing down, especially if this disease and this lockdown uh, continues, we're likely to see further businesses also uh, closing down. Okay. Um, other things that uh, came out from that conversation is that uh, there's also a lot of young entrepreneurs that are coming out and that are finding new ways of, of coping with this disease and, and sort of adjusting their businesses, finding new innovations. And uh, this includes people who are uh, now you know, making face masks. Um, I've even seen a university in Puntland who are also working on uh, hand sanitizers. Um, some large company here in, in also in Somaliland is also developing, has, has uh, kind of, kind of uh, tailored their businesses uh, to develop new hand sanitizers. Okay. Uh, so innovative way. So everybody, there's a lot of people who are thinking different ways now, sort of okay. you know adjusting their businesses um, to cope with this uh, COVID-19. However, uh, the most the most uh, important thing that came out is that you know the day workers, the people who had uh, small businesses that were only sort of you know going up and only sort of becoming more you know sustainable, um, are now being the most affected, and those ones really need a lot of support. Uh, to sustain them so that you know they can they don't close down okay mustafa i want to say thank you very much for your time um we really appreciate what you're doing in the community supporting youth supporting businesses uh, and now also supporting in terms of fighting the coronavirus in in somaliland uh, and in puntland uh, we'll check back with you again at some later point to find out, you know, what the progress is, what you're, what you're continuing to learn, what new developments are going around. So thank you once again, and um, we'll get in touch yes. with you again for a, a more updates. Okay, thank you very much. I will share details about your organization and what you're doing so that people know where to find you. Excellent. Thank much you. appreciated. Thank you very much. Okay, well, thank you. Alaikum salam. Thank you.